students, welcome to another chemistry session. Today's topic is types of reaction. At the end of this lesson, the students will be able to identify and name the types of chemical reactions, write balanced chemical equations for various chemical reactions, define and describe different types of chemical reaction as exothermic or endothermic, predict the product of a reaction and explain catalysis. Now, types of chemical reaction. There are different chemical reactions in chemistry. These are synthesis or combination reaction, neutralization reaction, displacement reaction, redox reaction, decomposition reaction, combustion reaction, endothermic and exothermic reaction, and catalysis. Now we take them one after the other. Synthesis reaction. This is a type of reaction where a substance is formed as a result of chemical combination. In this reaction, two or more reactants form one product. Synthesis reaction can also be called combination reaction. This means the formation of compound from the combination of its element. The general form for a synthesis reaction is A plus B to give us AB. Types of synthesis reaction. We can have one, metal and oxygen gas to give us metal oxide. And that we can see from calcium plus oxygen gas to give us two moles of calcium oxide. Number two, metal plus sulfur gives metal sulfide. Zinc plus sulfur gives zinc sulfide. Metal plus hydro plus halogen, which could be chlorine, fluorine, bromine, or iodine, to give us metal halide. And for example, we have sodium plus fluorine gas to give us sodium fluoride. And the last one for that is non-metal reacting with oxygen gas to give us non-metal oxide. And so we can have sulfur plus oxygen to give us sulfur four oxide gas. So for four oxide gas. Neutralization reaction. Now, these are specific kind of double displacement reaction. An acid-base reaction occurs. When an acid reacts with equal quantity of base, the acid-base reaction takes place when hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion combine to form water. Acid reacts with bases so that the properties of both are lost. The acid-base reaction results in the formation of salt and water. The reaction between an acid and an alkaline is called neutralization reaction. The general equation is acid plus base to give us salt plus water. Now we can have different kinds or types of neutralization reaction. One, we can have when acid react with aqueous ammonia solution. What we have will be salt and water, that is, HCl plus ammonium hydroxide will give us ammonium chloride plus water. The chloride ion and ammonium ion do not take part in the neutralization reaction. They are not changed before and after a chemical reaction. They do not appear in the ionic equation. They are called spectator ions, that is, ions that are struck out from the equation. Number two. Acid and metal carbonate to give salt, water, and carbon four oxide. We can have it as hydrochloric acid plus copper two carbonate to give us copper two chloride, water, and carbon four oxide. Number three, so we can have another one that we can have will be acid plus metal hydroxide. Which, which will give us salt and water. And in this case, we can have hydrochloric acid plus potassium hydroxide to give us sodium, uh, potassium chloride and water. We can also have acid and metal hydrogen carbonates to give us salt, carbon four oxide and water, which we can have as an example of nitric acid plus sodium hydrogen carbonate to give sodium nitrate carbon four oxide and water. And finally, we can have acid and metal oxide to give us salt and water, which we can have 
calcium oxide plus nitric acid to give us calcium nitrate plus H2O. Thank you. I will see you for the next class. Welcome back. So we go to the next one, which is displacement reaction. This is a type of reaction in which a less reactive element is displaced by a more reactive element in a chemical reaction. Types of displacement reaction. There are two general types of displacement reaction. One, we have the single displacement reaction. Two, and we have the double displacement reaction. So we look at the single displacement reaction now. Single displacement reaction is a type of reaction where a more active element displaces another less active element from a compound. Most reactive metals can displace or remove less reactive metals from their salt solution. If a reactive element comes in contact with the compound of a less reactive element, a chemical reaction may take place. The less reactive element is removed from the compound and replaced by the more reactive element. For example, if you put a piece of iron nail into a copper sulfate solution, the iron displaces the copper as shown in the reaction, that is the iron plus copper 2 sulfate will give us iron 2 sulfate plus copper. Iron is oxidized to iron 2 solution and copper ion is reduced to solid copper. Note, the reactivity series is a list of metals in order of increasing reactivity. You can use the reactivity series or electrochemical series to make predictions about the reaction. A more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal from its compound. Double displacement. Double displacement is a type of reaction when two ionic compounds are mixed together. The two ionic compounds switches cations, that is the positive energy. The general pattern of a double displacement is AB plus CD to give us AD plus CB. For example, ammonium sulfide plus ion 2 sulfate to give ion sulfide plus ammonium sulfate. Another example that we can have is lead 2 nitrate plus sodium sulfate to give us lead 2 sulfate and sodium nitrate. Now, different types of double displacement reaction that we can have. One, we can have neutralization reaction. This is the formation of neutral salts and water. This has been discussed earlier. Number two, precipitation reaction. This is the formation of insoluble solid called precipitate and gas formation reaction. This is the formation of a gas in a reaction. Now, let's look at precipitation reaction. Precipitation reaction is the formation of insoluble solids in a reaction. Precipitates usually form when two metal aqueous salts are combined together. Solubility rules describe which compounds are soluble and which are insoluble. This rule is used to decide if a precipitate forms in a reaction. Now, let's look at different types of precipitate reactions that we can. Number one, we can have precipitate of halides of silver, which we can have as silver nitrate plus potassium bromide to give potassium nitrate and silver bromide solid. Another one is precipitate of halides of lead. Now, soluble lead ion can form precipitate with soluble ions of bromide, iodide, and chloride, like silver, in the above reaction. So, we can have the lead nitrate with magnesium bromide to give us magnesium nitrate and a precipitate of lead bromide, which we can have ionically as lead 2 ion with two moles of bromide ion to give us bromide, uh, lead 2 bromide. Another one we can have is precipitate of sulfate of barium, calcium, and lead. Lead sulfate, barium sulfate, calcium sulfate are all insoluble solid. They remain in solid in water. So we can have lead 2 nitrate plus lead copper 2 sulfate to give us copper nitrate and lead sulfate. Now we can also have precipitate of metal hydroxide except group 1 hydroxide and ammonium compounds which are soluble. Copper 2 sulfate plus potassium hydroxide to give us copper hydroxide plus, po plus potassium 
sulfate. Now, the third one, which is gas formation reaction. A double displacement reaction should occur if an insoluble gas is formed. Gases such as hydrogen chloride gas and ammonia are soluble in water, but some other gases such as hydrogen sulfide are insoluble in water. Insoluble gases are often formed by breakdown of unstable double displacement reaction products. For example, marble chips or calcium carbonates react with dilute hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride and carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is unstable and readily decomposed to form carbon dioxide and water. So we also go into redox reaction. Redox reaction is a reaction in which one substance is reduced and the other substance is oxidized. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, gain of oxygen, loss of hydrogen, and increase in oxidation number. Reduction is the gain of electron, loss of oxygen, gain of hydrogen, and decrease in oxidation number. Redox reaction has been explained in some of our presentation. Thank you. I will see you for the remaining classes. Stay tuned. Now, welcome back. Now, decomposition reaction. Now, decomposition is a type of chemical reaction where one reactant yields two or more products. It is just an opposite of a synthesis or combination reaction. Most of the decomposition reaction requires heat. The general form is AB to give A plus B with, uh, with a delta at the base of the arrow. The delta means heat is applied in chemistry. Types of decomposition reaction. Number one, decomposition of metallic carbonate. Metallic carbonates decompose into metal oxide and carbon dioxide when heated. For example, calcium carbonate to give calcium oxide and carbon four oxide. Two, we can have decomposition of metallic hydroxide. Metallic hydroxide, except sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, decompose into metallic oxide and water when heated. Example, calcium hydroxide to give calcium oxide and water. The composition of metallic hydrogen carbonate. Metallic hydrogen carbonate decomposes into metal oxide, water and carbon dioxide. Example, sodium hydrogen carbonate to give sodium oxide, water and carbon four oxide. Combustion reaction. Combustion reaction always involves molecular oxygen. This process is commonly called the process of burning. Anytime anything burns, it is combustion reaction. The reaction of a substance with oxygen is called combustion. Combustion reactions are always exothermic. Types of combustion reaction. Combustion of hydrocarbons such as methane, ethane, propane, and butane. We can have hydrocarbon plus oxygen will give carbon dioxide plus water. Other combustion reactions include combustion of metals. This will form oxides of the metal. For example, when magnesium plus oxygen gas to give magnesium oxide. Another one is combustion of non-metal. This will form oxide of non-metal, which when dissolved in water, will form acid, which turns, which is thus regarded as acid and dry. When carbon burns in oxygen to give carbon four oxide. Exothermic and endothermic reaction. Exothermic is a, a is reaction which gives out heat. The temperature rises. The product is at lower energy level than that of the reactant. Hence, excess energy is given out to the surroundings. Example of exothermic reaction are combustion reaction, neutralization and respiration, etc. Exothermic reactions are always represented by a thermochemical equation as represented as, for example, if we have nitric acid plus KOH to give us potassium nitrate plus water, delta H negative, where the delta H is the enthalpy or heat of neutralization, which is negative. Endothermic is a reaction which takes in heat. Temperature falls, the product form are at high energy level than that of the reactant. Hence, energy is absorbed by the reactant from the surrounding. Example of endothermic reaction are the composition of compounds such as calcium carbonate or photosynthesis, now, for example, we can have calcium carbonate decomposing to calcium oxide plus CO2. Delta H is positive. Catalysis now. 
Catalysis is defined as increasing the rate of a chemical reaction by introducing a catalyst. A catalyst, in turn, is a substance that is not consumed by the chemical reaction but acts to lower its activation energy. Typically, only a very small quantity of catalyst is required to catalyze a reaction. In some cases, one effect of catalysis is to lower the temperature at which the reaction will proceed. Catalysis does not change chemical equilibrium, but it affects both the forward and reverse rates of reaction. It does not change the equilibrium constant. Similarly, theoretical yield of a reaction is not affected. Example of catalyst. A wide variety of chemicals may be used as catalyst. One, for chemical reaction that involves water, such as hydrolysis and dehydration, the proton acid are commonly used. For solids, you can use catalysts include zeolite, alumina, graphitic carbon, and nanoparticles. For another one is like when you use transition metals such as nickel, they are mostly often used to catalyze redox reaction. We can have organic synthesis reactions may be catalyzed using noble metals or late transition metals such as platinum, gold, palladium, and so on. Now we can have types of catalysts. There are two main categories of catalysts. These are heterogeneous catalysts and homogeneous catalysts. Enzymes or biocatalysts may be viewed as a separate group or as belonging to one of the two main groups of catalysts. Now, heterogeneous catalysts are those which exist in different phases from the reaction being catalyzed. For example, when we have ethene plus hydrogen to give us ethane when catalyzed by a solid nickel, then we can also have the homogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous catalysts exist in the same phase as the reactant in the chemical reaction. Organometallic catalysts are one type of homogeneous catalyst. Now, we can have an example such as the ozone forming oxygen gas with chlorine gas act as the catalyst. Enzymes are protein-based catalysts. They are one type of biocatalyst. Soluble enzymes are homogeneous catalysts, while membrane-bound enzymes are heterogeneous catalysts. Other related terms in catalysts include precatalysts. These are substances that convert to become catalysts during a chemical reaction. They may be an induction period while the precatalysts are activated to become catalysts. Co-catalysts and promoters. These are names given to chemical species that aid catalytic activities. When these substances are used, the process is termed cooperative catalysis. Thank you. I'll see you again. Thank you very much.